Now we're going to look at the main advantage of using a template engine like Pug, and that's the ability to give and use those variable names when rendering a HTML file. So um, let's say that we want to uh, render a message on this page after this welcome. So there are two ways that we can do this. So when we're giving, uh, when we're calling the render method, as a second argument, you can give an object similar to a request body with some variables. So let's say we want to give a variable called message, and the message says, um, let's say, please sign in and sign in or register. I mean, it doesn't matter what it is. Um, so that's our message right here. So this is what we want to give to our pug template. So pug has access to this message now um, when we run this render method. And there's two ways that we can display this message. So if we just need to um, put this message into a um, tag, for example, um, all we can do is we can just say the, the tag and then equals, and then we can literally just put message here like this. Um, and if I run the server now and we refresh this, we can see that the message has came up here saying, please sign in or register. So that's how simple it is to do with Pug. It's very, very minimal syntax. Now, the other way we want to do it is, let's say that we want to add it to this welcome right here. Um, what we can do is instead of assigning this um, um, P variable to the string welcome, we can remove the string right here. Just do P and then a space. And that lets us generate our um, content right here. And what we can do here is we can just literally write in our text right here. And then to insert the message variable, you would put a hash like this and then put curly brackets. And then inside it, you can give the name of your variable like this. So if we run that one now and refresh this, we can see that it says welcome, comma, and then our message, which is please sign in or register. So this message variable gets added in here automatically. So that's two different ways that we can um, give variables. So if we look at the challenge now, um, what it wants us to do is we have this um, title variable right here being rendered, and we also have this um, message variable as well also being rendered. By the way, this is just an ID for the um, paragraph tag right here. So we just need to give the this title and um, message from our server.js so the pug can render it right here. So what we need to do is in server.js, when we call the render method, um, we want to give it the index page, but we also want to give it the object with our variables. And the first variable we want to give it is title, and we want to set that to hello. And the second variable we want to give it is message, and we want to set that to please log in. So we've given our title and our message now, and Pug will now have access to these. So if we uh, refresh this page, we can see that it says please log in right here. And um, if we go into index, hopefully we should see that, yeah, the title hello has also been rendered right here. It's really bad formatting at the moment, but it has worked. So that should be everything we need to do. So we can just go ahead and um, submit this. And let's hope, yeah, that, that seems to have worked. So again, what this does is when we call this render method, um, it will tell Pug to um, generate an index.html file from this index file right here. And it will also give it this title variable of hello and message variable of please log in. And when Pug is rendering this, it will receive those variables and it will replace this title here and this message with those variables. And then they'll get rendered into our HTML page. And for the user, it just looks like it came naturally like this. So it's a very secure way of adding in details into a page. So again, yeah, that's how you complete that challenge. So you can just go ahead and submit that.